All right. Hello, everybody. It is so, so good to be here with you. Today, I am thrilled to be sharing with you something that I'm calling Treasure Mapping Miracle Stories. It's that time of year where here at Astrology Hub, we welcome in the astrological new year, specifically the Aries new moon with a tradition called treasure mapping. For the last few weeks leading up to this period of time, we have been focusing on composting, letting go. We've created composting boards. We have been letting go and releasing the things that we are done with in our lives. These are physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, all the above. Now, starting after the Aries new moon on April 8th, we will shift our focus to what it is that we're calling into our lives. And this is basically astrologically timed vision boarding with a little bit of nuances and a little twist to it. And like I said, we've been doing these for three years. This is going to be our third year in the inner circle. And we share it with the larger community as well. Uh, and so you're welcome to do these things on your own. We also do them together via workshops within the inner circle. Okay. So today I'm going to share a little bit more about my personal experience with treasure maps over the last two years. And also I'm bringing on an inner circle member, Dawn, who's going to share about her experience with treasure maps. I know she's focused on the last year. She may go into the previous year as well, because I know she did treasure maps two years in a row. So a couple things before I dive in. If you want to know more about what treasure maps are, we did a podcast episode with astrologer Tracy Cook, who is the one who brought treasure mapping to Astrology Hub. I did a podcast episode with her last week. So we'll put the link for that in the show notes. You can get the, the background and the, and the download on what a treasure map is and how to create one for yourself. Okay. Hey, that's one thing. If you're interested in the composting board, because right now, all the way through Monday, it continues to be the time to be letting go and releasing. So if you're like, Ooh, I think I'd like to do that. The idea behind that is that we're making space. We are literally energetically, physically, spiritually, mentally making space for a brand new beginning. And this Aries new moon full solar eclipse is like a new beginning on steroids. And so we want to be really intentional about what it is we're calling in, what it is we're ready to release. And uh, I'm having such a Mercury retrograde moment. My desk is one of those that goes up and down and it just, it's just deciding to do that on its own. So excuse me if I'm um, going up and down on your screen. Um, but anyway, so, so this is a, a period of time where we're really going to be focusing on again, letting go and then welcoming in. So quick backstory. I mentioned Tracy Cook. She's the astrologer that she just, I think she reached out to me via email or maybe messenger on, on Facebook. I don't even remember, but she reached out to me and said, you know, I've been doing these treasure mapping workshops for the last 20 years. And the, and they're basically astrologically timed vision boards. And I've been facilitating these small, like local groups, a little bit online, but I think your community would love them. And do you want to learn about them? And, and we can talk about it on the show. So we talked about it. And I went, oh my gosh, yes, this is amazing. I know our community would love it. And so a tradition was born. We did our first treasure mapping podcast episode, and then we brought the treasure mapping workshop into our inner circle membership for um, our Aries new moon ceremony. We do ceremonies at every new moon, but we made this treasure mapping workshop a core part of our Aries new moon ceremony that we do every year. All right. So I'm not going to show my first year map. I'm just going to give you some like high level summaries about what happened. So that first year I made my map and was astounded at how quickly things began to manifest. And that was what Tracy said about the astrology of that particular year. She's like, people's maps are going to, are going to come true. Like th there's, there's such a, there's such a potent energy happening around that particular Aries new moon that she felt really confident that people were going to have great results. I certainly did a few standout things. I'm a Capricorn. I love goats. 
I especially love baby goats. They just like completely delight me. They are so cute. They make the cutest noises. They like bound around. And I just, I think they're amazing. So I put baby goats on my map just simply because of their energy, simply because of their um, playfulness, their, their joy. And it was within weeks that I got a phone call from my neighbor who informed me that she got these new baby goats and would I like to come and meet them? They were these super adorable, like really special goats. I can't remember the name of them. And then neighbors on the other side had a ton of goats, baby goats that they brought in. So now on both sides of my house, I'm surrounded by these goats and goat noises. Then at my love's house, they got baby goats and one of them escaped and would come and visit us on a daily basis. This goat was so precious and would just come and visit us. And I was like, this is amazing. I was like, I literally asked for goat medicine, baby goat medicine in my life, and I got it and in, in abundance. Okay. At the time I was, it was, it was post COVID and working from home and children being at home. I mean, I've always worked from home, but children being at home at the same time. So I was doing my podcast recordings in the living room. I was working from the living room. My children were home a lot and it was really logistically challenging. So what I, what I wanted to manifest was a home office slash podcast recording studio, but it was a time where supplies were in serious short demand and uh, labor was in even more shortage, especially here on Maui, like on this Island. It was, it was literally almost impossible to get supplies and my desk, I'm sorry, <laughs> to get supplies and to get help to actually do something. So I put a home office on that map slash podcast studio and with like very little idea of how that would ever manifest, especially that period of time. And one of the things that's cool about the treasure maps is Tracy talks about how long it's going to take each thing, take things to manifest and how, um, a lot of the things manifest by that, by the June cancer new moon, and then other things will wait until the Libra new moon. And then other things will wait until an entire year. So, and sometimes up to till the very last minute of that year. So by the Libra new moon. A really close friend who is a general contractor, who's usually a way out of my price range and be way too busy to ever ask for something like this. He had a surprise opening in his schedule. And, and so, and there were other reasons why he wanted a, a simple, easy job close to his house. And so he said, yes. And within two months I had the home office podcast at uh, podcast studio at, for a very amazing price and modular so that I, I like, I can move it with me. If I ever move, everything just worked out so beautifully and elegantly and without a whole lot of effort on my part. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop here for a sec because I would love, Oh no, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> From the first year, the other thing that was just like mind blowingly astounding was my daughter, Sophia's map. So we made maps together, me and my girls and um, Sophia loves animals, especially puppies. And so she made a map that was entirely baby animals with a huge emphasis on puppies. At the time we had a, uh, my love had a golden retriever and he had recently um, given a black lab to my daughters. And so Sophia makes her map with all of her animals and especially her puppies. <laughs> okay. So this was March, right? We did our Aries new moon maps in March. By June, I found myself surrounded not only by these goats, but also by a litter of puppies. We found out two weeks before our black lab was, we were waiting to get her fixed because my love likes to let them have a couple heats. There was an accident. So surprise, she 
was like, we found out that she was going to have puppies and we only had two weeks before these puppies were going to be here. And not only was she going to have puppies, but she was going to have 10 puppies so, <laughs> by June. She has her, her litter. They live on my lanai, my porch. And for the entire summer, I am raising these puppies and we ended up selling them. We ended up keeping one. So now we have three dogs. And then by the end of the year, we had four dogs. So it was like, Sophia's maps now need to be, need to have parental approval because <laughs> clearly she's a powerful manifestation being as well. So we, um, that one was also amazing, totally out of the blue, never would have planned to have puppies on top of everything else that I do in my life. That was, it was like kind of insane, but also totally amazing. So, and, 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 and at some point in my life, I'm like, God, I would do that again. That was like pretty amazing to have that, um, have those be surrounded by that puppy energy a hundred percent of the time. Okay. So I would love now to bring up last year's map and we're, we're here live. So if you have any treasure mapping stories that you want to share, if you've participated in these events with us in the past, please put them in the comments and Courtney is here and she's going to look at the comments and she's going to um, bring any up. So if you have anything to share and, or if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Okay. So Courtney, could you please bring up my map from last year? All right. So I need to start by admitting that I thought my map was a failure because I ran out of time. There is particular timing in which you are meant to do your map. So it's literally between when the new moon happens and that first quarter moon is really ideal, but you could do it all the way up to the full moon. So there is nuances in the timing on this that you really want to harness. And if you kind of miss the wave, then it's not as effective. So I completely, like I ran out of time. I ended up basically slapping some pictures on the board really with, I mean, the one thing I really was clear on was this woman. And I'm going to tell you about why, but Otherwise, I like, I was like, oh, I don't know, light up the night. That's cool. Festivals of light around the world. I like that. The high desert looking pictures. I, you know, I'm really attracted to the high desert. And there was something about practical advice for the simple life that I liked. But like literally the picture in the middle with the with the moon and the sun and the and all that. I I don't I didn't really have a whole lot of like reasoning behind most of this, except for the woman. So let me just give you a little backstory of where I was at in my life. So, okay, the, the, the woman is basically what dominated the map and she was the thing I was most clear on. And literally you guys, I had to look up her name today because she is someone that I've seen on Instagram that I just really enjoy tuning into her energy, but I didn't even know her name. Her name now I know is Emily Engeman, Emily Engeman. And she, she just creates all these fun kind of like dancing videos and she does certain things with fashion. Like she like, I don't even, I don't, I, oh, she has like a fitness app. So she has a bunch of these things. So uh, someone on my team, Hannah pointed out that she is an expander for me. She's like a placeholder for a lot of things because let me tell you why I put her particularly on my map. So I'd see her dancing on Instagram and I wanted more dance in my life. I have danced my whole life and I was in a hula halal for a long time. But there was this gap where the halal timing wasn't schedule wasn't working for me for various reasons. I wasn't dancing in my hula halal, but I couldn't find anything to replace it. So this was going on for years and I really wanted dance in my life. It just feeds my soul on such a deep level. Okay. So that was one. She was also very frequently, fre frequently dancing with her teenage daughter. Actually, I don't know how old her daughter is, but she looks maybe early twenties, late teens. And I just thought it was so, I thought it was so cute. And I, I loved how tight they, they seemed, you know, they just seemed to really enjoy each other and have fun together. And I've always been attracted to my daughters also dance hula. So I've always been attracted to dancing together with my daughters, or she would be dancing with her sister. 
Now I don't have a biological sister, but at the time I was really wanting to call in more female friends locally. Most of my dearest female friends live all over the planet, but I was really craving more local sisterhood. Okay. She was in great shape. I mean, she's about my age, maybe a couple of years older than me, fit, totally free in her body. That's what I love. Like just like free and moving and free in her body. I was feeling heavy at the time. I really wanted to lose some excess baggage is how it felt to me. I was feeling heavy. And for the, for most of my life, I would kind of go up and down in weight. And there had been an approach that worked for me usually whenever I was feeling heavier, but it wasn't working anymore. I was like hitting a wall with that. And it was clear that it it wasn't going to work for me anymore. You know, I'm in my forties, there's lots of shifts happening and I needed a different approach, but I didn't know what that was. Okay. Um, plus I was having a really hard time being consistent with my training or workouts. I, I know the importance of muscle, especially as we age. And so I would start these routines where I could lift weights and, um, within two months of doing these routines, this happened four times, I would hurt my back. And so I'd have to stop and then I'd have to take a break. And then it was so hard to start again. And then I started to get to the point where it's was like, well, maybe I'm not supposed to lift weights, even though I enjoy it. And I really know the benefit of, of keeping healthy muscle on our bodies. So I'd kind of given up on it though. Cause I was like, gosh, I just keep hurting myself. Even when I'm being super careful, I still keep hurting myself. So maybe it's just not for me. Right. Okay. And then, um, she was happy. Like every time you see this woman on Instagram, if any of you know, she is, she's so bright and shiny and always happy and unapologetic about it. What I noticed is that sometimes I would read the comments under her, like dancing videos, um, which are just so like, talk about free and liberated. She just like goes on there and does these cute dances and, you know, people, people criticize her a lot. People come on and go, you know, get a job or, or get in the real world or, um, you know, you're acting younger than your age or whatever. They just, they really can be hard on her. And she, it's like water off a duck's back. It's at least from the outside. You know, I don't know what her internal process is, but she just believes from what I can tell in being happy and exuding happiness and sharing that happiness with people to inspire more happiness in more people. So I loved that about her too, that she just seemed to be um, impervious to the meanness that's, that can be out there. And she has great hair, like the best hair I've ever seen. It's so amazing. Um, so I, I loved her hair too. And it's curly like mine. So I was like, oh, maybe my hair could kind of look like that. That's the one thing that hasn't happened yet, but I'll tell you more about that in a sec. Okay. So what came true from this board? Within weeks of, my, of making my treasure map, I found a new dance class. Literally been looking for years, found a new dance home. I love it. I get to do it. Tuesday and Thursday nights. Well, now it's only going to be Tuesday, but I love it. It's a consistent medicine in my life. I've also just gotten to join another dance that is Latin. It's a Latin and Bollywood mix, which is fun because the other one's a little more hula, Hawaiian hula inspired. Um, so I'm doing that. Okay. I get to dance with other women in my classes. So there's like this sisterhood that has formed around the dancing. And a few months ago, I also met a a bunch of new women that just feel like those soul sister women here on Island. Okay. Just a few months ago. Also, my daughters and I were invited to dance together at a halftime show for my brother's football program. They have a Polynesian day and he wants us to come and dance hula at this event. Okay. Me and my daughters. So random. So out of the blue, right? Okay. Also, I have lost 25 pounds. And again, this happened like so organically and like different pieces started to come in for me. I applied them and it just has worked. It's felt effortless and, and amazing. I've simplified what I eat. El eliminating sugar is a huge one. Not that I was a huge sugar person, more like a dark chocolate and honey kind of girl, but that alone was enough to, to start to, to shift things. But not only that, um, and then prioritizing protein, but 
I have been more consistent with my training than ever before in my life. In August, I started again from like the kindergarten level. I mean, taking it so slow and so light, like almost embarrassingly slow and light, but that's helped me like build up. And now I'm doing strength training three times a week and loving it. And then also doing my dance and all these things that I, that I enjoy for the first time before training was, it was kind of like drudgery. Like I would try to figure out how I could fit it into my schedule. But now I'm like, how can I wrap my schedule around movement? Because I I'm enjoying it so much. Okay. All right. What else happened? It's okay. So the other things that, um, came in the high desert, I visited Prescott, Arizona, like three times in the last year, at least. And for various reasons, we needed to go to Prescott, Arizona, and just that, that landscape that was on my board. I hosted the winter solstice series. And, um, that to me was truly a festival of light and also a light up the night event. So, and that came out of nowhere as well. That wasn't something I was planning on when I made the map. And then that, um, practical advice for simple living, I, I did not have this in mind when we were at a leadership meeting and we decided to make the motto for astrology hub, simplify to amplify for this next coming year. So it, it's been this whole process of simplifying so many aspects of my life, my diet, my schedule, our company's launch schedule, all kinds of things. So pretty much everything on the map that I thought was sort of a failure has happened. And one of the things that for me as a takeaway is I, I made a simple map. And so it enabled a simple focus. And I'm not saying you have to do that. And I think Don's going to come on with a very different experience, but I just wanted to emphasize that you don't have to always do it the same. Okay. All right. So I now would love to bring on Don Pascal, who is um, an entrepreneur She's a business owner and she is one of our inner circle members and she shared her treasure mapping story in the inner circle. I asked, you know, can I get some miracle stories? I want to share some miracle stories. And she wrote about her experience and it was so powerful that I was like, Don, will you come on the podcast? Can we talk about this with everybody? So um, here we are with Don and Don, welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy you're here. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Amanda. You are so welcome. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, we are right now in our promotional period for the inner circle. So if you like this idea of astrologically timed rituals and ceremonies to learn astrology in a really embodied, practical, um, applied way, now would be a great time to check out the membership. So we'll put the link for that um, in the comments. Uh, through April 11th, you can become a member for 45% off the regular price. And I'm looking for a link. Oh yeah. Astrologyhub.com slash inner circle 24 astrologyhub.com slash inner circle 24. So we come together and we do these kinds of rituals every single lunar cycle. You get to learn from amazing astrologers. You get to become more fluent in the language and you get to you get to embody the astrology on a very consistent basis. So if that sounds appealing to you, the inner circle might be a great home for you. So go check it out. And it's, it's um, available through um, April 11th at the, and then April 11th is also when we're doing our treasure mapping ceremony uh, and workshop together. Um, Daphne, I'm going to answer your question. What is our time frame for creating the treasure map? So, we always time it around the Aries new moon after, not before. Uh, visions will still be coming in for you until that Aries new moon. And also you're releasing things all the way up until that Aries new moon. So you don't want to do it before. We're going to be doing it on April 11th, but then you have until, I think it's like the 25th. Is that right, Dawn? When the, the first quarter moon? And, I think so. And then there's, and then to the, okay. So really ideally you would do it anywhere between April 11th ish and that first quarter moon. And you can look up when the full moon is happening for this Aries lunar cycle, because that would be like the end date. Like you really don't want to do it after that point. So you do have a good, like, you know, 20 days or so to get it done. Um, Tracy said that 
she used to recommend people do it like no more than, you know, five, 10 days after the new moon, but she's found that people have success, even if they do it up until that full moon. So that would be your deadline. Okay. Dawn, welcome. I'm Bye. just again. Yay. Okay. So tell us about your experience, where you were at before um, you made the map, what you were wanting to bring into your life, and then the experience of what happened. So this past year's map, or I should say last year's map was very different than the prior year. So the first time that I ever did um, a treasure map <clears throat> in the sense of the treasure map through that I found through astrology hub, right. As opposed to like old school sort of vision boards that I did for, for decades. Um, last year's map was very different than the year prior. Um, I saw, um, instantaneous results, especially around me personally. So I kind of divided my map into, into three. Um, and because my whole life is really always divided between me and then me as as my job, right? So I added me as in me, priority number one, um, my job, of course, because it's always going to be there and, and I have my own business. And then a, a love interest, like why not, right? Because I've always sort of put all of that down at the, kind of the bottom of my, my totem pole or the bottom of my priority list and said, nope, not going to do that. I'm changing that up. So uh, so this past year, um, or I should say last year, right when I did the map, uh, I got myself on a program to get myself, me, the personal me, Dawn, to a better place. And I lost 32 pounds. Um, I started at the beginning of the year last year. And then by the time I did my map, which I did it with the first new moon, right? So that was the earlier one in March. And because um, that worked better for me and for my chart, because, you know, I've gotten used to looking at my chart and, and kind of what works for me natally um, and with the transits. And, uh, and then I did my map and then I, you know, I did start to see results by the cancer new moon. Like it was, it was amazing because now I was tuned into it, right? I was yeah. looking at it every single day. I was kind of throwing energy at it. I was saging it. I was, I put it in the Southwest corner of my room. So from a Feng Shui standpoint, that was a um, a better place for the map to be for me. Ah, so that's where it. I placed it. So mm. I kind of like tried to throw in as many things as possible to give it as much energy and and focus on the okay. Let's see all the positiveness that we can get out of it. And yeah. you know, and for me, the big thing was the thirty two pounds that came off. So were you struggling with that before? Like, has that been hard for you I've, historically? Yeah, I've struggled with my weight my entire life. So I'm a Taurus rising and I have Venus and Taurus and I love to cook. And and it doesn't necessarily mean that I, I love to eat in excess. I just love things that are good and that are yummy. And obviously I love to do that for others. And, uh, you know, when when I started my business 11 years ago, I, you know, I, I found very quickly sort of the old patterns of me not being me again, personal dawn, not being a priority in my own life. And the business came first and I sort of became a slave to it. And with that, I, you know, wasn't eating right. I wasn't eating enough. I wasn't sitting and relaxing. I wasn't taking care of myself the way that I should. So again, my focus of my map you know, last year was, was choosing health. It's right dead center in the middle of my map, choose health with an arrow and my name and a, a picture of myself um, at a point in time where I loved the way that I looked. And, uh, and that's sort of where I, I, I sort of kept my energy and my focus on that every day. Don, can we see your map? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do you want to okay. just walk us through like the things sure. that you you focused on that have actually happened. it's big <laughs> yeah it's see, big. see okay. this, and this is what i want to want to point out mine was super simple on accident and it was profound like i had a one person that sort of held the space for a lot of things right like she right. she was a placeholder for all those things that i wanted to bring into my life but this is a different visual right like dawn's bringing in a lot of elements a lot of different words a lot of visuals so walk us through it okay so right center in the middle my initials right choose health 
somebody sort of like with their arms in victory V like, yay, you know, they've accomplished something right. or they're, they're focusing on themselves first. Right. And, right. and, and it's not from a selfish standpoint, it's from a self full standpoint. Right. Mm-hmm. Because again, back to that, you know, you know, example, you know, you have to put your mask on first before you can put the mask on somebody else. Right. So how are you supposed to care for something else? Or how am I supposed to care for my business if I'm not caring for me first? Right. So that's number one in the middle, of course, here then sort of brings me into love. Right. Right. And, and finding someone, um, because I'm ready to commit to that. And, uh, and I'm and I'm open for bringing that into my life at this at this point because I will make it a priority again. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. all about the business, right? And it's mm-hmm. not all about the job. So um, I love saying this every day. I am intelligent, capable, and confident. Mm-hmm. Here's my inner circle community because I joined you in 22, right? August of 22, right after my mother had passed, uh-huh. and it was a really very. Um, healing time for me. Um, I made the decision to join astrology hub and, you know, join the inner circle, I should say. And obviously I found out about you guys through Ann Ortley, who I had been following for a decade plus. Mm. And, um, and it just sort of seemed, it seemed to be the right fit. And it, and it was because everybody embraced me very quickly. So it's wonderful. I love a community. Mm. Um, you know, you put, you get out of it, what you put in it, right? Like anything else in life. And I found out about Divine Harmony. I found out about her shadow course, which Mm -hmm. I took. And then slowly but surely, you know, you kind of start peeling back the layer of the onion, right? And finding out more about yourself and your natural reaction to things and how you should change some of those that really might not be the greatest initial reaction to, you know, to issues and things that come up in your life. But Um, so yeah, so you guys are on here. It it meant a lot to me to be part of it. Um, and then of course, you know, um, highlighting my sister who's, you know, who's my best friend. Um, here's where I want to be, which is, if you can see that Mm -hmm. sort Mm -hmm. of like a bed and breakfast, um, Mm. that's what I would love to do. This is all my business. Now, this is my own sweet home business and all of my partners where I sell my my vegan products. I have podcast here. Um, and you're which, on the podcast, I, right? You know, that was the special little treat I wanted to share. Yeah. Isn't that kind of crazy? Yeah. So that really, pardon the expression, dawned on me um, the other day after um, I received the email, you know, to, to be on. And I thought, wow, okay, come on. If that's not literal, then so there That's it is. Amazing. Right. Oh my God. That, like literally that just hit me too. And I used to love fresh direct in New York city. I, I <laughs> loved it. It was like my, my, I, I leaned on fresh direct. That's yeah, so no, they're, they're a great, they're a great company. And then if I sort of switch to this side, um, this is, uh, you know, to, to my angels, my, my parents who are now both gone, um, you know, giving myself space and time to travel, getting dual citizenship with, for Italy. So that's a, the double passports here. Um, you know, and then if I switch this way, sort of, um, you know, making, making time and space to, you know, to sort of give back. Yeah. So yeah, it's a lot. Okay. So tell us, tell us all the results that have actually manifested. So there's been a, there's been a lot around the business. Um, and that has really just happened in the 11th hour. Um, Mm. so, you know, uh, too much stuff to sort of go through in, in detail, but, um, ramped me up to the point that I am now. Right. So it's really been a very sort of, um, slow moving train. The train left the station, but the train was chugging along and I felt a little bit like Sisyphus where you roll in the rock up the hill and the rock comes down the next day. And it's been like that for a while uh, because the nature and my whole business model has changed over the years from, um, you know, from the pandemic. I no longer have a brick and mortar bakery, but I still have one product that I produce. So my whole business model sort of changed. So it took a while to kind of ramp that back up again to the point where I was before when I had the brick and mortar space and I was doing bakery and butter and, and, yeah. and, and, and so on and so on. So, so that's finally gained some traction. Um, 
you know, me personally, um, and, and still continuing to make space on a weekly basis for me and do things that are healthy and proactive for me and taking care of my body and moving and practicing yoga and getting back to the things that I really loved and were a core part of my life, which I sort of just gave, I gave everything up. I gave everything up when I started my business, not saying that that's necessarily a hundred percent bad. Uh, yes. Cause you have to give it all, give it your all. It is yours you're the only one who's going to, um, you know, continue to move that forward for yourself, but you need to find a balance. It's so yeah. important. Yeah. Well, it helps you be even better at your business. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so it, they right. feed each other. Right. right. Yeah. How about love? Yeah. So love, uh, interesting. Um, so, uh, so some people have come and gone, um, and some have come back. So, you know, we'll see. I'm not gonna, <laughs> no, can't really. Teresa, you have a few more days until April 8th. I do have a few. Well, you know, look, and everything seems to be happening in the 11th hour. So who knows? Yes. You never yes. Know. And right. then, um, how about travel? Have you had that chance to do the travel that you were wanting to. so not the travel yet but planning for the travel so i am i applied for my dual citizenship mm -hmm. um so uh so the goal is to travel to italy right we I've, I've been there before loved it um it's where my family comes from my ancestors come from and i would love to you know start to to form a relationship with uh with flying there on a regular basis and, and being there, maybe even spending, you know, um, months there at a time if I can, which you can when, when I have my citizenship there. Hmm. You know what? I love what you're bringing in here because Tracy has always emphasized that at the Aries new moon, because it's the Aries energy that it is really important to focus on ourselves that especially women, we have a hard time doing that. And normally our focus is on the kids and the partner and the, you know, you know, all the other things, but that this is one time to really give yourself permission to focus on you and what you need in order to be the person that you want to be and, and be the helpful person you want to be in the world. So I love that so much of what did really come through for you was around the things that you're doing for yourself. Right. Which is setting right. you up to be the person that can be the great partner, right. can take the trips, can, you know, do all these other things. Right. So it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's laying. So, so for me, I feel like it's laying a better foundation for what the next phase of my life will be. So no matter what happens with the business, how it changes, how it morphs, I still am going into all of this, a better version of me. And mm -hmm. that was really my goal. And then also, you know, because I, I, my, both of my parents are now gone, right? My, my father died very unexpectedly in November of 2020. That was non COVID related. Um, but that sort of threw the whole family into a, a tailspin and a tizzy, uh, during of which as a small business owner, I'm struggling to get the business back open again. So it mm -hmm. was, you know, it was crazy. It was completely crazy. I really can't describe it any, any better um, but knowing what he passed away from, and then 18 months later, knowing what my mother passed away from, you know, it has awakened in me, making sure that I am healthy, mm -hmm. and that I am not, um, you know, going to go down that same road. If you are, ge ge let's say, genetically predisposed, right, to some stuff, I, you know, I don't want to turn a blind eye to and just be like, no, 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 everything's going to be okay. Well, maybe it will be okay, right? But if I know this now, why wouldn't I want to get myself to a healthier standpoint? So that really was, like I said, the center of my map. And my main goal was to, was to, to get a, a better version of me. Mm. Something else that you put on your map that I wanted to just highlight because of what Astro Lotta shared at our Your Eclipse Pathway to Purpose panel event. I asked all the astrologers if they had a practice or a mantra or something that we could use in our lives right now and through this Aries Eclipse portal and beyond. And Astro Lotta brought in 
the I am statements mm -hmm. and the important, because Aries is like, I am right. I am oh. and paying attention to the I ams that we say that are not helpful. Like there are things that we might say that we are to ourselves that are not getting us where we'd like to go. Right. right. So paying attention to those and then asserting like you did on your map. I am confident, intelligent, and capable. Is that what it is? Intelligent, capable, and confident. Yes. Yeah. So I would just invite any of you out there to, to sink into that vision for what you're wanting to create in your life, find visual representations of that, and then also assert it as if it is true now. And that's a key to, um, making it real. Yes. <laughs> Right. It's a key to making it real. So just that you could put, I am all over the map. Like I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that. And you'll also notice that Dawn put a lot, put more words on hers. You can do whatever you want. You literally have complete creative license here. And what I've loved doing is creating a little bit more of an intuitive process over like my last year one, obviously was just basically spirit led. Like I didn't actually put that much thought into it. <laughs> and this year I'm planning on doing something similar and, and I'm not even thinking about it right now because we're not at that Aries new moon yet, right. but I'd like to do a very similar process where I'm allowing the part of me that has a different vantage point, my higher self, whatever you want to call it, my soul to direct, to direct a little bit more and to surrender to whatever that, that is. And of course I'll bring my own will to it, but yes. Right. Right. So I, I have the same vision for, for this year. I, I don't, as much as I love this, it's colorful and it's big. Um, I want something that's smaller and, um, and that really hones in on maybe two main facets of my life um, yeah. for the year, as opposed to throwing, you know, more is not always better, right? Sometimes right. less is less is more, right? So yes. in your case of of yours, um, you know, the the picture of the woman that you had on there had so many other layers and dimensions to it other than just the picture of the woman there, right? right. And yes. if you didn't explain it, we would have just looked at it and said, Well, okay, she has beautiful hair. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Amanda loved She's her hair, you know, exactly. something to that effect. Totally. Um, which she did, she had beautiful hair. Yes. Um, but when she explained it more and it's like, oh, okay. So it's kind yeah. of like a, a picture, you know, it speaks a thousand words, right. Kind of thing for me, for sure. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. yes. Right. So, and that is what, that's what this is about. Finding those, those visuals or words that, that strike that resonant chord for you for the next vision idea step on your path that you're wanting to really, really embody within the next year. And right. to not limit yourself in that either. You know, I, at that point in time, if you had told me like, I would be training five days a week, I will ha would have lost 25 pounds. I'd be like, that would actually feel too big to try to bite off. And I, right. I don't, you know, I, but so just by putting the placeholder of the possibility, then the way came in and it came in joyfully. And not like some crate, like in the past, it'd be like, I have to go to the gym and I have to limit what I'm eating. And, you know, it, there was this sort of punishment around the whole thing, but this has all felt just so joyful and easy and fun. And, yeah. and so, and I, yeah, absolutely. Um, because, because weight has always been a little bit of a, a struggle for struggle for me. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I changed my perspective last year and to your point, exactly. It wasn't, I can't have this or this or that it was, look at all of the other bounty of things that I can have and look how fabulous I will feel yeah. when I'm on the other side of all of that. Yeah. So, and it's, so, but it's just changing your mindset. So every yeah. day I wake up, I, I look at my board and, and I thank it. And I thank myself for all that it's brought me. And especially, you know, my business with all the things that are changing, I thank it for everything that it, that it's brought me. I, I no longer allow myself to focus on all of the things that have changed, which I could very easily uh, categorize as saying all the things that I've lost, but I really haven't, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's brought me to where I need to be now. So yeah. 
And that's where Dawn, I'm I love here some with you. Of the, <laughs> I love some of the daily rituals you've brought in around your treasure map too. And I just, I, I want to emphasize a few of them. You said you saged it daily. I do. Yeah, you do. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't sage it daily. I usually sage it around every new moon. Every new moon. See, this is what is so cool about aligning ourselves with the cosmic curriculum. There's built in reminders. So for Dawn, new moon now means sage, cleanse, clear. You know, I'm sure you do the intention setting ceremonies with us. And, yes, you, yes. you know, the, these, these rhythmic, consistent rituals aligned with the rhythms of nature enable you to just foster a connection with the cosmos and with yourself that deepens lunar cycle after lunar cycle. So I love that you do that around the new moon. And then you said you put it in the Southwest corner of the room. Yes. Okay. So that's because another- Southwest for me, from a feng shui standpoint of where I live and in my room and in the home that I live in, the Southwest for me was the most prosperous and abundant this year coming most likely it can be again in the Southwest if I feel fancy and want to put it there, or I could put it in the Northeast for me. For you. How do we find out what is for us? Do you know feng shui more? Like No, I don't. I'm, so I have a, I have a very wonderful friend ah. um, who has a fabulous feng shui practice. She's a master. And ah. every year I set time with her, you know, ritual again, yeah. where we run through the whole home and we move everything around based on where everything is in the Bagua and where, you know, if it's your peach year or, you know, it's your seven year or your five year or, yeah. you know, and so on and so on. And I literally move things around in my room so and cool. I feel the energy shift. Right. And mm -hmm. then I sage everything in my room. And, you know, again, for me, it's ritual. It makes me feel good. Right. So that's really that's really the main point, right? You you go with what makes you feel good. If it makes you feel right. good to do that, then do it. If it yeah. makes you feel good to spray a smudge spray instead and you don't like the smell of sage, then use that instead. If you want to light a candle and say a prayer next to it, then you do that. Do them all if you want, you know? I'm so Which curious is really what now, speaks to you. Mine was sitting in this one corner of this office slash podcast studio and uh I'm so curious now to know because it it was so powerful. I'm like, maybe I should just put it there again. And again, it's one of those things I meant to hang it on the wall. I just never did. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like, right. it's so interesting. Um, Don, thank you. Thank you so much for coming and sharing. This has been such a pleasure. And I love hearing about your successes. I love hearing about the transformation that you've experienced in aligning these little simple rituals with the cosmic curriculum, which is just, it's what I love to facilitate and foster and encourage people to do within the inner circle. It's, it's why we base the inner circle on the lunar cycle. And, um, and then to just hear how it impacts people's lives just makes me so happy. So thank, thank you. you. For and yes. thank you. And thank you for creating such a beautiful community and a beautiful space for all of us to be part of. And um, and it really is a very nurturing and supportive group. So thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Oh, well, we, we get to go gather with the, the inner circle in a, in a little bit for our new moon forecast for Aries. And again, like I said, if you're interested in trying out the inner circle, now's the time to do it. There's no contract. You can jump in, see if it's right for you, see if it resonates, see if it's helpful for you. If you, if it's not, then you can leave. If it is, then you will lock in that promotional price for as long as you stay a member. So, so you'll get the best pricing and you will get to keep that pricing. No matter what happens to inner circle pricing in the future, you get that price. So um, we would love to welcome you in. You get to be with great people like Dawn. I've gotten to meet some inner circle members in person and it's always like this. Like there's some sort of frequency that we're all riding on. And it's always just like, oh, it feels like coming home. Like these just amazing, beautiful humans that are out there doing this like very magical behind the scenes work. And no one would ever know. Like you're you're an entrepreneur, <laughs> you're a businesswoman. Like probably people wouldn't guess that you're doing these little treasure mapping rituals with sage right. and feng shui and whatever, but but you are and it's beautiful. And I'm so grateful to know you. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have treasure mapping questions or 
miracle stories that you want to share, please put them in the comments. Otherwise, just thank you for tuning in. If you're doing the treasure mapping on your own, have fun, enjoy. If you're doing, if you're wanting to do the treasure mapping within the inner circle, go to astrologyhub.com slash inner circle 24 and join us today. All right. Take care, everyone. And we will see you very soon.